Kong here talking about beyond adversarial learning, security risks in AI implementations. So he's gonna take it away. Well, thanks for the introduction. Well, welcome to my session, I'm Kang, and uh, here I'm gonna talk about probably something different from the other talk uh, in the CI village, because I'm gonna talk about really the security part, I'm a security person. So this is a work uh, jointly with a couple of people from Chihu 360 and uh, Wei-Lin from University of Virginia. Uh, I have four authors there, and there's a four bulldog picture there. There's no correlation between the author and the picture, okay? <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, we had a paper published in the IEEE Security Privacy uh, Workshop on Deep Learning and Security in May. Uh, so this is pretty much the same talk. Uh, how I hope you, you guys were not there, so this is something new to you. Okay, so uh, first, a brief introduction about myself. I'm a professor from the University of Georgia. Uh, in the past, uh, my work is mostly on the, uh, uh, the software security side. I organize lots of uh, uh, capture the flag teams, and some of, the, some of them are well known, like uh, SecDoc or DiSec. I'm also the founding mentors for the like uh, Blue Lotus team. Uh, one of our team, like uh, Team Dysec, was last uh, the finalist of the Cyber Grand Challenge like two years ago. Here, uh, we were one of the seven team. Um, so recently, I'm I'm actually right now taking leave from university. I'm doing consulting work in industry. Okay, so now let's go back to the main topic. I'm not going to talk about the machine learning. Algorithm. I'm actually going to talk about the a little bit about the deep learning implementation. We don't have much time, so I'm going to try to be brief. So I'm going to start with a, like a simple question example. So you all seen this? If you work on deep learning, and you open the textbook. This is the first example you see. My question for you is like, how many lines of code for you to implement this? This is Amnist that. Do, that, that does the digital uh, recognition. You, you take a picture, it has the digits in it, they recognize it. How many lines of code to implement this? It's not long, like the code for implementing this pretty much like you need the networking part and you need the solver totally. Uh, it's like, I would say less than 300 line, okay? Now how can you do a fancy thing like all the magic in a such small piece of you know, code? It's because our current implementation on most of the deep learning application, they're not building from scratch. Usually, you use a framework. There are lots of common framework like TensorFlow, Cafe, Torch, you know, you might use some wrapping language, but pretty much, well, at, at least for the people I talk to, they don't build this from scratch, okay? And when, when we discuss the uh, implementation algorithm, or even you look at you know, the uh, like adversary machine learning, you're really talking about on the top layer, like you're looking at your model, your parameter, sometimes you might talk about your training data, but we don't talk about much underneath, okay? So the underneath part actually matters. Let me show you an example. So you probably, if you are in this area, you have a look at lots of cat pictures or kitty pictures, right? So this is the one example like we got from cafe, we download, you know, we, we run and you can, you can run this easily. I you know, assuming you have some model from other place and then you run, you give a picture, it you know, produce some result. Now, one I did an additional thing is I did like in um, this particular one can build as a, a Linux application. So I do IODD. Okay, for people that you know in, in this field, like if you do security, you know, okay, what this does it shows all the library dependency of that you know, application, right? So in that particular one, I recognize cat. Uh, the code is not long, but then it depends on one 137 libraries. Okay, that's a lot of libraries, right? And we, we did some not really scientific calculation, and here's some number I got. This is actually, I, I did this in 2017, it may be old, but gave you a rough idea. So I go to count the lines of code in Cafe, TensorFlow, and Torch itself. Now, I said this is not scientific because some of them are implemented in C, some of them in Python, so lines of code doesn't really, you know, cannot compare them. But roughly you see like, there's a few hundred K lines of code in each of this framework, okay? Now in addition, they all depends on a bunch of libraries that not even include that a few hundred line K like lines of code. So there's lots of package. 
And then, then I gave a few example, like for example, cafe, I put there's like LibZ, OpenCV, LibProtoBuff, right? You know, there's lots of packages are common. You need to have some language to parse the model, the parameter, okay? And you don't want to implement this from scratch. Well, when you have this complex dependency, people in security are really excited. They're happy, right? So that's what we, you know, we did some work. This is only in the summer I was doing some consulting work in like Chihu 360. Like in one summer, this is the number of CVE you find related to all the other early package. And then and we actually find more. I didn't put there because this is for all these slides are for a pre previous paper published early this year and it was written last year, okay? And then I put a picture there, and the picture says artificial intelligence is no substitute for natural stupidity, okay? Now, this was a uh, different meaning before, but I want to use it to say that in AI, we are, we are talking about so many great things about AI, but if you have this stupid programmer that doing something for this brilliant algorithm, <laughs> then you have trouble, okay? <laughs> Now I'll give you, uh, to say more concrete, some people say, oh, this is not in the, you know, how, where are these bugs? I'll give you one example. This is, uh, it's hard, I, I didn't expect we have this such small screen, okay? But I, I'm gonna try to read it out, like, so this is a screenshot, I go to the, like the GitHub of Cafe, and this is like their image data layer. So I click the link, like the CPU implementation, uh, I can now even read here. So this is the image data layer. I, I, basically, I'm trying to do screen capture to say where the code is. This is in Cafe image data layer. And if you click it, and this is the code there, and then the, there's the include that actually points to like they use OpenCV, okay? Now, so which means that even OpenCV is a dependent package. Every time you use Cafe to write an image parsing you know, deep learning application, you say read in the image to this layer. You're calling this code. And this code actually calling OpenCV to parse the image, okay? And then, you know, I'm just, again, I, I don't expect you to read the code, so give you a rough idea. This, I, I pick one of the CV, you know, we find and it's list here. What it does is it read a picture, it try to, you know, parse it, and the, the part I highlighted, that's actually controlled by the input, that's in the image. So what happened is this piece of code try to read the image into a layer, and then the, the first they read some parameter from the image that tells you really the size of the image. And then uh, this is a particular part control the color palette, like depending on how many color you have, right? And then they, they later use this number, then they, they have a memory copy, and then uh, you know, they actually have the wrong number, there's the heap overflow there. And then I show you, this is, you know, we reported the bug in 2017, an OpenCV developer actually fixed it, uh, they, you know, this, uh, even the, the patch, this is a patch for that bug, and uh, you see that they actually show that they removed two lines, add three lines, actually only one line, it, because the two blue line and the, the bottom of the two red line are the same. So really the top, the CV assert part, that's what they add in. So that adding a line says color use less than 256, because early on I told you like the input can be larger than 256, so there's a over, the heap overflow, right? I, the reason I bring this up is that again, this is the programmers not that good. They put a patch, this patch is not complete, unfortunately, because they didn't consider the number less than 256, but what if I gave a negative num number which become a large number, so bugs still there. I try to convince them to say, hey, there's still a bug. The guy is like saying, I don't care, right? You know, this is really not my problem, okay? So I have to go further to say, show you what the problem. So again, go back to this kitty case. We take a picture, we gave to this, you know, cafe model, a, a cafe program that classify image. And uh, to make sure I'm not cheating, so I download the model on the Berkeley lab website, and they claim this is a train from the image data, the competition, right? And they're using the Google model, so that I use all of theirs. And if you gave the, that kitty mod, uh, picture, then it will tell you, okay, what kind of cat it is, it gave you a different category, what the probability, okay. So we take that program, I craft this for you know, picture, because I need to convince this developer say there's something you need to fix, okay? So this, these are the four pictures I show on the front of the, uh, the slide. And uh, the top left one, the bulldog, is uh, 
I, I grab from the internet, okay? And the reason I you know, grab from the internet, of, of, of grab a Bulldog picture is because, okay, Bulldog's the, uh, the, the mascot for University of Georgia football team, right? <laughs> so I, I grabbed that one, and then I made, I messed up the other three. Now, visually, you look at it, and you're like, okay, there's something different for people to sit close, okay? This, I'm not doing address stream you know, machine learning. I'm not touching the pixel, okay? What happened is I actually mess up the metadata. I actually lie about how many color I use. That's why it looks slightly different, okay? But the, the picture content is the same, okay? So I only mess up the metadata. This is the result of the classification. Again, I don't expect you to be able to read it, so I'm gonna use uh, image to, to show what happened. This is the same program using Berkeley's model, Google's, you know, data, like, you know, the result. Of course, the initial one I throw in, it's a Buddha, because that's a, the picture I got from the internet. And this, I have to say, the machine learning algorithm does pretty good with the real picture, okay? They're really good. And I talked to AI expert. One thing I'm really always surprised is that they always assume the data actually come from natural place and you, you take a picture from with your phone. Well, no, like, you know, the second one, you know, certainly you imagine, like, I put a picture, I mess up the data, sec fault. Okay, no surprise, right? You know, I, I have a heap overflow, of course I sec fault this. Okay, almost sec fault here. <laughs> okay, so. That's easy to understand, but I, I decided to push it further a little bit. We put a you know shell code in it. Okay, so this time I like it lie. Like, I always imagine like what this bulldog want to be classified. So I, I imagine there's a bulldog want to fly. You know, so I, I decided to like it to you know classify as a flying pig. Okay, so that's the result. In fact, because this is not again, this is not adversarial machine learning. I'm not trying to get a panda become become a gibbon. I, mean, I can mess up the pixel. The output is generated by me, my code. They're actually writing my code. I can actually let it say anything, okay? I can let a panda to become panda, or, you know, or, or kung fu panda, anything, okay? So to, to go further, the, if you didn't see it, like I have a shell there. So I, I let them like the cafe program take my picture, then they spin out the shell. And basically I, I, the picture I show in there, I own you. Uh, we even did this actually in a cloud environment. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't have this in the, you know, in the picture, but you can imagine like you running a classification service, like uh, using AI application, you just say, you know, you're lazy, you just copy the, you know, using the D4 application from Cafe or whatever example. You run this as a cloud service. This same code can own your cloud, basically. You have this interface, I can have a shell come back. We have a demo on that, I have a video. I present that in the, in the POC conference. So to summarize, okay, I mean, there are lots of other bugs. I, I only show you Cafe One. Don't consider other frameworks are better, okay? We also have TensorFlow bugs, okay? So, uh, but overall, what I want to tell the audience is that Deep learning frame uh, application depend on lots of uh, third party packages. Okay? You need to be careful about all this and complexity leads to vulnerabilities. Yeah. If you have this large complex program, you're gonna have trouble somewhere. And even your algorithm is perfect, you have trouble. And the risk of application, here I only show you, I can do denial of service, I can seg fault, I can get system compromise, I can certainly do misclassification. There's, you know, I, I sort of also show that, so evasion attack. So that's pretty much all I want to do. There are other examples I can show you offline. Uh, you know, feel free to contact me. Uh, 